is Melinda with raw-wisdom.com and we are eagerly anticipating Nathan's interview this evening with the Raw Spirit radio show. And today is the 11th day. Yay! Um, of the people that are following us, we lost one. Oh well. He can jump back on. We have another one that jumped off for a little bit, but she's back on. So, I want to encourage you all to stick with it. Uh, it's a good way to clean up your entire body and get yourself really, really healthy. So, good luck on the juice feast, and, um, well, here's Nathan. Yes, I am. Uh -huh. Sure, my my pleasure. New York. Uh, yeah, we're a branch of the Tree of Life Rejuvenation Center. Correct. Mm hmm Yes. Yes. And we're actively developing intentional community here. Yes. In the center of New York. Uh-huh. Yes, I have. Both me and uh, my partner Melinda have, uh, for each of us for five years, lived in intentional communities. So, yes, we feel it's a... Uh, uh, <laughs> It's a higher level of connecting to each other, so it, an intentional community is anything not based on just money, so that we, whether it is for ecological, uh, social, helping others with disabilities, uh, actually Gabriel is doing a community in Nicaragua which will have an orphanage, which is such a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. No, that'll be in Nicaragua. Yes. So we'll be part of that community as well. Yes, yes. Uh-huh, correct. Well, not, not exactly studies. It's, you know, I believe very much in what I call inner activism. Um, you know, activism is usually external, where uh, you're trying to convince a politician to do something or a consumer to do something. But I believe very much in ideological, inner spiritual activism and to change people's perceptions. So, what we're going to do is launch a campaign which I call Turning Around GROs and introducing that term GROs. And that has both, you can put a negative or a positive spin on, on those letters, on those initials. Uh, on the most negative side, it would be genetically raped organisms. And that's because when uh, the the genetic gun, the gene gun, which was invented right here close to us um, at Cornell University, is used to impregnate uh, the nucleus of cells. It's a violent process that's not consciously accepted by the cell. And it's akin to, to the process either of rape or, or an invasion of a country that, that hasn't given you permission to, to trans... Uh, to go across its borders and its sovereignty. And 
on the positive side, those initials can stand for gently reared organism, or raised organism, or reaped, or, or restored, or, or wrapped with, or run with, or, or, or raptured with. So, um, I'd like to introduce those initials into the, into the consciousness of our planet. GRO instead of GMO. Be yeah, because, uh, you see, genetically modified, the word modified has, has the sound of om in the reverse. And it has that, that, that sense of gently altering something. And the process of genetic engineering is not gentle. It is a violent uh, invasion and infringement of the, of the sovereignty of each living being on our planet. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Start, yeah. Yes. That's true. That's true. Yeah. We have been. Yes, yes, the whole planet. Yes, and we've limited the number of potatoes, for example, to, you know, five or six main varieties. If you go down to Peru, there's thousands of varieties of potatoes. And so we're losing the, the diversity of life force, you know, that, that we're taking into our own bodies. Oh, sure, yeah. I mean... When you say genetically modified, I mean, I think you mean you're including hybridization, right? And that, that's like, I, I compare it to introducing a, an Afghan woman to an Eskimo man and seeing if they get along, and, and, and sometimes they do, and so you create a hybrid, you know, you keep mixing seeds and, and, and kind of um, varieties of and planting them together is where they mix their pollen and so on, and uh, whereby genetically engineered uh, 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 organisms is a more violent process where it's forced, again, like a date rape. And so, uh, but this kind of artificial, even, you know, hybridization of, of putting people on dates where normally they wouldn't go <laughs> has been going on for some time. And actually that's how uh, Gregory Mendel's original uh, th uh, treatise on the gene theory was resurrected for 50 years. It was virtually unknown. It was the hybridization industry that, that resurrected his treatise. Yeah. Yeah. It is. And the gene theory itself is part of a larger mechanical worldview, um, which, um, you know, I'm trying to uh, circumvent or get past with a life-centered and consciousness-centered worldview. <laughs> what I, well, you know, I, I'm actually today on, a, on the 11th day of a juice feast, so I'm not <laughs> eating, I'm drinking the vegetables, but <laughs> normally. Uh, what's my very favorite raw food? Oh, God, is it mango? <laughs> That's because I've been to Hawaii, maybe, you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I spent a whole summer, but way back in the 1960s, I spent a whole summer at the University of Hawaii, and at that time, their campus was, was a paradise, and everything grew on that on that uh, campus, you know, breadfruits and uh, dates and uh, and mangoes and papayas and you name it, and I, I didn't have to go buy anything in the store. <laughs> Correct. 
No, we're not doing that uh, currently, but we did for for uh, about 13 months or so. We started, yeah. I helped get together the funding, the organization, and so on for the 